All right, guys, welcome back to today's video. In today's video, I'm looking at a 2024 election prediction here between Joe Biden and Ron DeSantis here, the two possible nominees for their respective parties. Now, Biden, I believe, has secured his party's nomination as the incumbent, although um, there are certain other Democrats who may buy into the race, such as, for example, um, RFK Jr. Obviously, has already announced that he's running. You also have Gavin Newsom. Bernie Sanders might come in. So several Democrats may try to come in, although I think that Joe Biden has the nomination in his hands. On the other hand, DeSantis there is vying for the Republican nomination, but is seeing a little bit of slack, but may um, become the nominee if Trump's legal troubles get him somewhere in a bad position, or if Trump drops out of the race, or if DeSantis somehow um, gets higher in the polls. So let's just take a look at some background information right before we get in here with President Joe Biden's approval rating on different issues that we're looking at here. So with the economy, Joe Biden's approval rating on the economy is at not very high. It's at a 38% approval rating on the economy. On other issues, though, his approval rating is a bit higher. But on the economy there, um, it's not very high whatsoever. It's at 38%. Disapproval rating is at 58.6%, a spread of net difference of 20.6%. Obviously, you can see here different polls here. This is Real Clear Politics poll. Real Clear, Real Clear Politics combines many polls, such as Fox News polls, CNN, Yahoo News polls. They combine many polls and put them together and then get an average of the raw data. So that's just an average there of several polls there, as you can see from President Joe Biden on the economy. President uh, Joe Biden on foreign policy here. Foreign policy is not very high either. He has a 40% approval rating a bit higher than the, than the approval rating on the economy. And he has a disapproval rating of 55.6% on um, foreign policy. Immigration. Immigration is a pool rating is really, really low. It's a 33.4%. That's lower than even on the economy. It's a 33.4% approval rating on the economy, 60.4% disapproval rating, a spread of 27 points. On inflation, um, it's not very good either. Inflation is lower than the economy, which in inflation is a part of the economy, although there are several factors with regards to the economy. His approval rating on the economy is 33%. 0.2%, 33.2%, so that isn't good either. Disapproval rating is extremely high, 62.8%, a spread of 29.6 points. On crime, his approval rating is 36.3%, disapproval rating 56% there, um, obviously there. Joe Biden now is promising a assault weapon ban. Um, now, the assault weapon ban is not as popular as many may think. Um, only about half of Americans want an assault weapon ban, so that's obviously not extremely high. Um, on handling of Russia, Ukraine. Now, this goes a little bit higher as far as his handling of Russia and Ukraine. A lot of Americans are happy that Joe Biden isn't bringing troops into Ukraine. A lot of Americans think that just funding Ukraine would be good. Other Americans say it isn't a good idea, especially among Republicans. His approval rating on handling of Russia and Ukraine is a lot higher than on the economy. Uh, 45.3%. Now, when it comes to the coronavirus, coronavirus, I don't know if it's going to be such a big thing because on the coronavirus, Joe Biden definitely has had a good victory as far as um, public approval rating. His approval rating on handling the coronavirus was 49.3%. It still is 49.3%. Although then again, I don't think a lot of Americans are going to be thinking about um, the coronavirus that much when they're going out to the polls and voting, since it is going to be in 2024. So that's a plus 6.3, 49.3%, much higher than on the economy, and even higher than the handling of Russia and Ukraine. So that's on President Joe Biden. Let's take a look here at um, some other polls here for Ron DeSantis. Ron DeSantis here, his favorability rating is 34.1%, unfavorability 47.7%. Obviously, the um, as, as critics called it, the don't say gay bill, as many critics call it, as you can see here, just a scatter plot here showing just basically a general trend line of where we're going in the scatter plot. Um, a plus 13.6% as far as unfavorable ratings and not extremely high here, as you can see, YouGov polls, HarrisX polls, uh, you can see Quinniap. Um, their polls as well there. Now, as you can see, his approval rating wasn't doing so bad um, going back even in January, the beginning of this year. It did start to make some wild leaps um, starting in May. It went really bad for him, and that's where his favorability rating is at right now. Then again, not all Americans know who Ron Sandys is. If you add up um, these approval ratings up, they only add up to around 80%. So 20% of Americans still do not know who Ron DeSantis is, which is kind of hard to think about 
um, understanding the fact that he is making a lot of waves in the GOP nomination. So let's take a look here at where we are in our electoral college and where each candidate wants to be here. So obviously, uh, President Joe Biden wants to make his case to voters that the economy has gotten better since 2020, um, that the coronavirus no longer controls us, that the lowest unemployment in a while, and that is Joe Biden's, whatever his case to voters, he's going to sign an assault weapon ban, that's what his case to voters here is. DeSantis is obviously going to be on the economy, obviously on the war in Ukraine, he's going to say that the economy is in a bad condition, uh, he's going to say that he's going to declare a war on woke, as he calls it there. So this, these are basically the two sides. Let's take a look here at the electoral map. First of all, obviously, guys, we're going to go ahead and give the safe states to either party here. Washington, Oregon, California. I'm talking about the East and West Coasts, especially there with their extremely polarized shifts there. Um, again, especially in the middle, you have a polarized right wing. New Mexico is um, safe for the Republicans there. Extremely safe for the Republicans. Illinois, extremely safe also for the Republican Party there in the state of New Mexico and Illinois. Hawaii, also safe for the Republicans, extremely liberal there in the state of Hawaii. D.C. votes for Democrats by plus 90 points in almost every single election, no matter what the election is. So should be pretty safe uh, for the Democrats right there. So that's what we have the Democrats at right now. We have President Biden here at 185 here. And let's get right into Ron DeSantis as far as the safe states are concerned. Montana, Indiana, and Wyoming are definitely going to be safe states. Now, a lot of people are saying Montana is a little bit less Republican. I don't really think so. I think Montana is pretty safe for the Republicans. North Dakota and South Dakota, obviously the Dakotas. Um, Doug Burgum is actually running from the Dakotas there. So an interesting fact that one of the GOP, um, uh, one of the GOP candidates there vying for the nomination. Oklahoma, Louisiana, Arkansas. Arkansas is actually the home state where Issa Hutchinson, Governor Issa Hutchinson is in. So that's a GOP state there. Mississippi and Alabama, and also South Carolina, West Virginia, and um and yeah, that those so those are the states there. I also put Utah in there. Uh, Utah it has a heavily Mormon population, although I think Ron DeSantis would be pretty favorable in the state of Utah there, putting his total there up to 78 electoral votes compared to President Biden's 185. Now let's move on to the likely Democratic states. Uh, sorry, let's move on to likely Republican states, just so that we evenly split this as far as who's going first. So for the likely Republican states here, let's go ahead and give Maine's last congressional district as being likely Republican. Donald Trump flipped this district two times in a row, and it's becoming more and more trending towards the right there with regards to the um, one of the congressional districts in the state of Maine. Now for the state of Indiana. Pretty Republican. The former Vice President of the United States, Mike Pence, was also vying for the Republican nomination. Um, it was a governor of this state. He also served as one of the congressmen within the districts in one of these states. So an extremely um, conservative state. They're not extremely conservative uh, because obviously Barack Obama won the state here in 2008. Um, obviously, um, it, it, it would get flipped in 2012. 2016 and 2020 Republicans would continue to carry that. Uh, but a pretty conservative Republican state right there in the state of Indiana. Moving on here from the state of Indiana, we're going to go ahead and give the state of Ohio as being a likely Republican state. The reason why is because Donald Trump won the state of Ohio by eight points in 2016. And then in the 2020 election, when many thought that he would still win that state by a smaller margin, he won that state by an eight point margin in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. So the state of Ohio, I think, is a likely Republican state, along with the state of Iowa, a state which has voted for Republicans in the 2020 and um, 2016 election there flipping from two, in 2012, flipping um, in 2016 from Barack Obama winning it along with Joe Biden. So the next state that we're going to be looking at here is the state, uh, I forgot to uh, mention this, but the state of Kentucky is safe for the Republican Party and the state of Tennessee. So that gives them at 132 right now. So continuing on with the likely states here, um, Alaska is a pretty, let me change that there. It's a likely state there. Alaska is a pretty likely state there. GOP has won that consistently ever since, um, I believe, a pretty long time. I'm not exactly sure when it voted for a Democrat, but it has voted for the Republican Party at least for the last 30, 40 years. It has voted consistently Republican. Moving on here, let's go ahead and give four of Maine's congressional districts to the Republican Party as being likely. We're going to go ahead and give uh, four of Maine, uh, Nebraska's rather congressional districts as being likely Republican there. 
pretty um, likely for the Republican Party there. It's one congressional district obviously was flipped by a six point margin, a, a plus six plus six point margin, about seven point margin in 2020 by Joe, President Joe Biden. Obviously, we'll be debating that as we continue on as whether to give it to Ron DeSantis or President Biden. But four of its congressional districts there being likely a Republican there. You could put it as safe Republican, uh, but I'll just put it as being likely Republican for now. Moving on here, let's go ahead and give some of the likely Democratic states. Let's go ahead and give two of Maine's congressional districts, amounting up to a total of three electoral votes, as one of its districts has um, three electoral votes. And guys, I might miss some of these along the way, and I might come back to these. So just keep that in mind in case you're wondering some of that. So two of its congressional districts there in the state of Maine there. Um, also, let's go ahead and give the state of Colorado as being likely. Um, Republican, I'm a Democrat. I'm going to put it as safe Democrat. The reason why is because the Democratic Party has won that state by a plus 14 point margin. If a state basically is a state, which I believe nine plus 90% chance is going to fall into one of the candidates columns, I'm just going to put it as safe of that party, basically. I know you could discuss maybe, you know, Colorado had voted by a plus 14 point margin. That isn't enough for a safe state. I think that it's enough for a safe state and we're just going to keep it as that. For the likely states here, we're going to give Virginia also to the Democratic Party. I think that Joe Biden will be able to secure the state of Virginia after winning it by a plus five-point margin. Now, when you are actually watching as the votes come in for the election here in the state of Virginia, as the votes are coming in, up to the point where 80% of the votes are in. When 80% of the votes are in, it will start switching Democrat. The reason why is because some of those northern eastern counties are extensively liberal since they're near the near the District of Columbia, D.C., where many of those elected officials are in. So that's an extremely liberal area in the state of Virginia, always switching it towards Republic or Democratic Party there. So an interesting idea there. Next thing here in Nebraska, one of his congressional districts, President Joe Biden won that by about over 6.5 points there. I believe 6.9 or somewhere around that. Uh, in the 2020 election, so I think that he'll be able to keep that there. You can debate with me on that. Next one here um, for the Democrats, Minnesota voted for President Biden by a plus seven point margin. I think that Minnesota will go Republican in the 2024 election here as um, as the votes are being counted there. Next one here, I'm going to give the state of, as far as likely states, Missouri likely state for the Republican Party. Bill Clinton carried the state of Missouri in 1996 and 1992, but has been reliably Republican ever since then. I do believe the Republican Party will do well there in that district. Um, moving on here, we're going to go ahead and give, um, for likely Democrat here, we're going to go ahead and give the state of New Hampshire. New Hampshire is a state which is liberal on social issues such as abortion, gay marriage, especially with the overturning of a Roe v. Wade in the 2020, um, right before the 2022 midterms. That will make a monumental task here, and especially with Ron DeSantis um, signing the most strictest um, pro-life legislation in the state of Florida, banning abortion at the sixth week, he will not do very well, I believe, in the state of New Hampshire. That being said, New Hampshire does have an extensively anti-Trump coalition there in the state of New Hampshire, a reliably Democratic state for the Democratic Party. I do not think the Republicans should spend time there in that state with only four electoral votes on top of that. So moving on here, um, we're going to go ahead and give likely Republican, obviously the state of Florida, Ron DeSantis pulled off a Big victory there for a public for the Republican Party, really in general. They're winning that state by a plus twenty point margin. Now, an interesting thing about Florida is that Florida has been really close in previous elections. In two thousand, it voted for George W. Bush by only about around five hundred votes. In two thousand four, it voted for George W. Bush by five points or higher around five points. And then in 2008, it voted for Barack Obama by seven points. In 2012, it voted for Barack Obama by one point. In 2016, it voted for Donald Trump by 1.55%. And then in 2020, it voted for Donald Trump by a 3.5% margin. So when you look at the demographics and when you look at the voting history, Florida might seem like a state which all the candidates need to head down to Florida, 30 electoral votes. If they can flip that state, they would win it. But the thing is, Ron Sanders pulled an upset victor. Not an upset, but he it was expected that he was going to win that state, but not by the margin that um, he actually won that by a plus 20-point margin. I think that he'll win that through the presidential race. That being said, if some Floridians like Ron DeSantis enough to make him not go to the presidency and stay in Florida, they might not vote for him. So that's an interesting fact there, just to consider there as you're looking there in the state of Florida. But I think that it'll go solidly for the Republican Party. All right, next for the lean states here, we're going to go ahead and give the state of, I'll, I'll put Texas as being likely Republican. I don't think anybody is, I think people are doubting, but I don't think that you can actually put Texas as being a Democratic state. 
I think that it's going to be leaning more and more to the Democratic Party as we move on, if Donald Trump is the nominee. If Ryan Sanders is the nominee, you have to understand this. Texas voted for Mitt Romney by plus 17 points in 2012 against a very popular candidate, Barack Hussein Obama. So considering that fact, DeSantis is more of a Washington establishment Republican politician, voting, um, serving in the Iraq War, graduating from uh, university with a history degree, going on serving as congressman, being a much more traditional Republican, he may be able to flip this day, not flip it, but make a bigger lead compared to Donald Trump. Um, if Donald Trump is the nominee, you could see me put that as being likely. But this is Ron DeSantis. It's a totally different game. You have to understand that from 2016 and 2020. All right, so moving on here. These are the next few states here are going to be extremely, extremely close with regards to either candidate there. It's going to be extremely difficult. In fact, the states, all these white, all these um, gray colored states there are all toss up states. These are all your toss up. This is a toss up, all of them Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, North Carolina, Georgia, Arizona, Nevada. These are the states, guys, which I believe will decide the 2024 election. And the reason why is because these are states which vote extremely close in most elections. All of the states right over here have voted for its each candidate in the 2020 election by under three points. All the, all of them under three points, and some of them even under one point. So these are going to be extremely crucial to both sides here, to win each of these states. Now, before we get into this, let me just comment here and say that every single state which I put on the electoral map has voted for the same candidates as far as the party is concerned, not the exact same candidates since Donald Trump ran in 2020, but the exact same party in 2020, which shows how polarized each state is and how you can actually assign states safe, likely, or lean. We can't just um, predict them as in 50-50 chance. But really, it doesn't matter whether Joe Biden wins the popular vote by, by 10 points. What it matters down to are these few states here with their very, very divided population. So let's take a look at this here. We're going to go ahead and give tilt. These are tilt, obviously. Tilt are, point, are states which will be decided by very narrow margins, very, very narrow. One point or two points there, very narrow. For the tilt states for the Republican Party here, we're going to go ahead and give the state of North Carolina. North Carolina has voted consistently Republican since 2012. It voted for 2012 in Mitt Romney, flipped. Barack Obama won it in 2008, flipped to Mitt Romney in 2000. Um, 12, 2016, he voted for Donald Trump. 2020, he voted for Donald Trump. In the midst of the pandemic, I believe that Ron DeSantis will be able to pull off a victory there in the state of North Carolina. Now, if we stop right there, this is where Donald Trump stopped in the 2020 election. Not as far as the electoral votes since the 2020 redistricting um, of the electoral map due to population census changes and reapportionment, obviously changed the number of electoral votes that each state has. But as far as the number of states... Um, as far as the names of the states, this is where Donald Trump ended in 2016 as far as how many electoral votes um, with regards to the states. Now, Do now, President Biden carried the rest of these states and won a victory there, winning over 300 electoral votes. Now, if he carries the exact same victory he does that he won in 2020, in 2024, he will win only um, 303 electoral votes, not 306 electoral votes due to the reapportionment that happened due to the, sense, the, due to the census that was taken in 2020. But I believe that Ron DeSantis can pick up a few more states. One of the states which I believe he can pick up is the state of Georgia. Georgia is right beside the state of Florida, and I think that Ron DeSantis can take the state. I think he can pull off a victory. You have to remember this. Donald Trump won the state of Georgia by plus 5.2 points in the 2020 election, in 2016 rather, and then in 2020 he lost it by 0.2%. So it's extremely close there. Joe Biden only won that by a narrow margin, about by 11,700 votes there. So extremely close there. But I believe that Ron DeSantis can flip that state. He does pretty good in the polling. Um, I believe he does. Uh, you can go and check that out there. But uh, he will do good in the poll. Georgia there, um, a tilt state for DeSantis there. Moving on here, we're going to go ahead and get the state of Arizona. Arizona, I feel like some Arizonians were just mad that Donald Trump said that John McCain was a loser and that he wasn't a war hero. Obviously, John McCain is a war hero. There's no denying that. Uh, but sometimes Donald Trump says things which he shouldn't say. Um, I think that Ron DeSantis um, will win the state of Arizona. I think that he can take that state. I think that Joe Biden pulled an upset victory in the state of Arizona. He narrowly won that state there. He narrowly, narrowly won that state. Fox called it early in 2020, um, but I think that it could have gone to Donald Trump in 2020 if just a few thousand voters had not turned out to the polls. 
Okay, so that's what we have there for those states there. And then moving on here to the two Democratic states, we're going to go ahead and give the state of Michigan and the state of Nevada, state of Michigan and Nevada there, um, two states which are which were um, not, Nevada was not reliably Democrat, but Michigan was an extensively reliably Democratic state until Donald Trump pulled an upset in 2020, um, in 2016 rather, um, but extremely close there. Nevada is a state which Democrats have won. I think that um, Biden's lead in, in Nevada might gain a little bit. Especially with Ron DeSantis being extremely on the right side, I think that the the um, conservative policies of Ron DeSantis, not that I'm saying they're bad or anything, but I think that they're not going to be very favorable toward individuals in Las Vegas or some of those other individuals there. So we have a 249, 247, 262 right there, and we're going to give our next state here. Now, obviously, for Biden to win the presidential election, he would have to win both Pennsylvania and Wisconsin. And for Ron Sandys to win, he would just have to take one of these, based on, obviously, my predictions. I believe that Ron Sandys can take the state of Pennsylvania. I think that his working class approach there, I think that his economy-focused campaign, really, I think it would be much more economy-focused than Donald Trump, rather than focusing on legal indictments and legal entanglings of a former president. I think that Ron Sandys' message will come out and will drive Pennsylvanians to the voting booth, and I think that Ron DeSantis will win that election, along with carrying the state of Wisconsin. Now, this is extremely close. We have him at 291 to 247. The reason why I gave the state of Wisconsin, by the way, guys, if you're wondering, is because Joe Biden only won that state by 0.6%. I think Ron DeSantis can easily flip, but I think that his working class mentality, I think that his economy-focused campaign, again, you have to remember this, guys, the person who wins the presidential election is the person who's focused on the economy. The person who's focused on the economy is going to win the election. Joe Biden's improving on the economy, on inflation, on foreign policy, on a lot of these issues. And guys, I'm not trying to be partisan here. I'm just saying the facts. We looked at his approval rating. We looked at on each of the issues. He's not doing good. Is Ron DeSantis doing good? Not really either. But is he more economy focused? Yes. Who wins presidential elections normally? Bill Clinton or George Shelby Bush in the 1992 election? It was um, Bill Clinton. Why? Because he said it's about the economy, stupid. And that's the reason why Bill Clinton won. And that's the reason why Barack Obama won in 2008. The person who's focused on the economy does generally tend to win elections. Donald Trump is not that focused on the economy. He's focused on his legal indictments. That's why it's a, it's a very hard choice for Republicans going forward in 2024 if they nominate Donald Trump. But there I have it, guys. We have President Biden here at 247. Extremely close, guys. Ron Sandy's at 291, guys. Hit that subscribe button. Like the like this video. Hit the notification button, guys. I'm going to see you next time. Tell me in the, down in the comment section if you disagree with these. I'll see you.